Hello, Hi. everyone. <laughs> Christina, I thought you were outside. Oh, right. <laughs> um, you want to know where but I it's, am? It's pouring rain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just right here in the library. I can actually even just leave that. You could. It looks nice. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, yeah, it is pouring rain here. And I don't have anybody coming in here. Um, I'm just going to grab this phone real quick. One second. Sure. So did, did you all get the book in hardback or did you do audio or did you use the um, uh, digital libraries? I did audio. Hardback. Hardback. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, Beth. Hi. I forgot to turn on my speakers. Oh. <laughs> I read the book in, I don't know, last June or something. The audio book was fun because it was narrated by Tom Hanks. Oh, oh cool. cool. I, did, I did the audio book myself. I, that's how I can get most of my reading in. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah, I heard, Multitasking, um, right? Mm -hmm. um, I do the same thing, Morgan, with all my commuting to and mm -hmm. from work. It's the only way I can get like adult books read. Otherwise, I'm just reading kids' <laughs> books with Leland. That's uh, the truth, yeah. <laughs> and we actually, so we had the audio book here available for people to check out. Same with large print and regular print. And mm -hmm. um, I was having people commenting about how Tom Hanks just made it so believable being the narrator mm -hmm. uh, for certain characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actors have that inflection even in their voices, just as uh, uh, sideways. <laughs> Good to see you. I am. You made it, Sandra. Am I good? Elaine, oh, yep, Elaine Ann. There. Yeah. <laughs> it's a better angle the other way, but. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> And I was uh, oh. teaching my nine-year-old, he has to do a lot of uh, Google Meets. So they're like Zoom for his um, virtual schooling. And uh, sometimes he has like the Chromebook really low. And we were talking about the whole like double chin thing that mm -hmm. it looks like when you're doing that. And he's like, oh, and sometimes they have to take like or make Flipgrid videos where they submit their work um, as a video. And then they have to do like a selfie picture with it. And we were just joking and he's like, maybe I should do one like this with the double chin. <laughs> no, just don't do that. He's like, but I kind of want to because <laughs> you're not supposed to. <laughs> so. It's so good yeah, to embrace that stuff instead of taking it personally. <laughs> I want to make people laugh. <laughs> so. Hi, Ruth. Hi. So do you want me to get started or do we want to wait a bit? Um, so... I know Nancy's not coming today. Um, anybody know of anybody else that said that they're planning to jump on? I think this is mm -hmm. probably most of the group here that would be here today. Sure. So, and, and I'll just add, I'll just add that we have to end right at three thirty. So there's um, okay. another meeting that's happening right after. So good to know. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So yeah. Um, oh, Chris is jumping in here. One second. Chris is joining. Um, but yeah, so Elaine is going to be facilitating today. Um, so thank you, Elaine, for doing that. Appreciate oh, it. and thank you for setting all this up. But... Oh, Morgan. <laughs> she's going to set it up and then train me on this one. So thank you to Morgan, too. <laughs> all right, looks like uh, Chris is fully connected now. And I'll keep yeah. adding people as, as we go. So sure. OK. Right, we're, we're getting started. Thank you, Elaine. OK, yes, yeah, so I was just going to give a little background on Anne. Patch it, and then we'll start in with a um, few questions, and we'll see how it goes. Um, let's see. She was born December 2nd, 1963, which makes her almost 57, I think. Um, let's see. Patchett was born in Los Angeles, California, and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. Her mother is the novelist Jeannie Ray. Her father, Frank Patchett, who died in 2012 and has been long divorced from her mother, served as a Los Angeles police officer for 33 years and participated in the arrests of both Charles Manson and Sirhan Sirhan. The story right. of Pat's own family is the basis for her 2016 novel, Commonwealth, which I thought was good because we did that on a previous book club meeting. 
about the individual lives of a blended family spanning five decades. Uh, education and career, Patchett attended St. Bernhard Academy, a private Catholic school for girls run by the Sisters of Mercy. Following graduation, she attended Sarah Lawrence College and took fiction writing classes with Alan Gerganis, Russell Banks, and Grace Paley. She managed to publish her first story, story in the Paris Review before she graduated. After college, she went on to the Iowa's Writers Workshop at the University of Iowa. And then just a little bit more here. In addition to her other novels and memoirs, Patchett has written four publications such as the New York Times Magazine, Washington Post, Oprah Magazine, LGQ Gourmet Vogue. Um, and a little personal information, Patchett was only six when she moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and she lives there still. She is particularly enamored of her beautiful pink brick home on Whitland Avenue, where she has lived since 2004 with her husband and dog. When asked by the New York Times, where would she go if she could travel anywhere, Patchett responded, I've done a lot of tra travel writing and people like to ask me where I would go if I could go any place. My answer is always the same, I would go home. I am away more than I would like giving talks, selling books, and I never walk through my own front door without thinking, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is kind of funny because I bet we're all feeling like we used to feel that way, but we're home so much now. Um, in 2010, when she found that her hometown of Nashville no longer had a good bookstore, she co-founded Parnassus Books with Karen Hayes. The store opened in November, 2011. In 2012, Patchett was on Time Magazine's list of the 100 most influential people in the world. She is a vegan for both moral and health reasons. And it looks like at the end of this uh, information I had that she's from 1992 to 2019, she's written 11 books. So, I, I just, yeah. may I add, uh, our granddaughter went to Belmont College in Nashville. And so when we visited her, we went to that her uh, Patches bookstore. Oh! It, and it was in a little, a little mall. It was like a mall that was uh, made a U off the main street. So it didn't have a huge presence and it was long and narrow and very, it was lovely to be in there. It was just fun oh. to just be in the environment. Cool, cool. So it did, that's very, that's very fun that you did that. Uh, is, um, did everybody like the book? Or not yes. like no. Who's saying no? no? Vicky? Chris, Chris Vicky? is saying no. Chris is saying no. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I have a problem with her writing, and it's too bad because I know it's me because I, too many people I know love her writing, but every time I pick up one of her books, I feel this cloud this dark gray cloud and i choose, choose i keep reading and i keep reading and i thought especially because i was reading it before the election i didn't need any more downers so unfortunately i would you didn't like to enjoy her work don't you like any of her stuff which is too bad you know why can't i see chris ah i can see you now <laughs> okay, kept, she kept saying Chris and I heard you speaking yeah. where are you okay did everybody else like the book or no. any other feelings on that oh Vicki not so much no I find her characters I like to read a book that stays with me through the day when I'm doing other things I think oh I can't wait to get back to the book yes. or wonder what that character is going to have happened to them and and I find her characters very forgettable. Oh, okay. Um, I um, yeah. I, you know, I liked it, but it's like like you say, she has an interesting way of writing. Um, um, uh, yeah. So I, I I see. I can say I like it, but I wasn't. And I'm not too critical of it. You know, it was one of those books I could take it or leave it. So. <laughs> um, but you know, and like that other book, Commonwealth, she wrote, I know was very popular too. And, and that one too was uh, pretty in depth in the family. 
Um, anyway, so I have lots of questions here. And like I say, if you don't like the questions, you know, we can move on. And this first question, there's a lot of stuff going on. So people can just jump in with their ideas. Some of them are more to the point. Okay, so I'm gonna read the whole thing and then whoever wants to speak on some of this, go ahead. Uh, what are the many and very details of the Dutch house? Rooms, stairways, architectural specifics, furniture, windows and doors, etc. What mood or personality does each space or element possess? What is the complex, complex overall effect? What might Danny mean when he says the house was a story or that it was impossible? Well, it's true the the whole book or the, the whole story is the house, but does anybody have any ideas on the architecture or the rooms or? Um, All I remember were the paintings. They kept talking about the Van Hubakes or whatever that were above the fireplace right. and then Maeve's photo on, on the other fireplace. Right, well, that's, that, that's there, right? When she yeah. was 10. And you know uh, what, there's actually a question specifically, but go ahead. I thought that they really stressed the windows and that, yes. you could, that you could see through, through the house, you know, yes. that they were so large and everything. Yes, yes. Um, I, never I don't know that there was just, I felt like so much description all the time about the house. So. Uh -huh. But did they ever say what kind of architecture it was? Even at the very end when May was having that big party, I thought, with all the light and seeing people, it must be that it had big windows. Is it was it modern? Was it? Mm -mm, no, know? I didn't get. I didn't get at all. I got the big mansion like, and I like, I like the detail. I mean, I, if I could draw, and I can't, I feel like I could draw that house. I mean, uh, and how it went on, and, and the coziness of that kitchen and the bedroom with the window seat um mm. but then the vastness of a lot of the other places um I, my battery is low i have to move <laughs> i picture oh. it as large too uh because they refer to it as an estate you know oh, I yeah. mean, first mm -hmm. they go from poverty and then he makes all these good real estate, um, you know, decisions and uh, uh, developments and all that. And so comes in all this money and without asking anyone, his wife or anyone buys this large estate. <laughs> so I just pictured it as really Huge. big. Huge, yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. And well, and that's what, what you just kind of summed up the whole book there, Beth, but that's, <laughs> that's the whole uh, crux of the story here. Well, there's a lot more to it, you know, like, why would Danny uh, not want to be a doctor and yet just keep going to medical school just to spend as much money out of the estate as they could, you know, it was like. <laughs> right, uh, right. I mean, it was. Um, that sounds like re retaliation to me. Right. It was like a, a, <laughs> vindictive, sure. a, a vindictive thing against what was her name, Andrea? Yeah. Uh, her name. Yeah, Andrea. Yeah. That's it for the month. Yeah. yeah. Was it? Well, she sure was a number, wasn't she? She ran the whole show. Yes. Well, uh, well yes. she was <laughs> really tonight. Right. Okay. And when we're going to get to some of that, you guys are way ahead on all of this, but yeah, that's absolutely true. <laughs> all right. Um, and, and you know what, Beth, we'll get more specific on some questions about Danny and, and yeah, taking the money and um, from the trust. Uh, what is the nature of the relationship between Maeve and Danny? What explains the longevity and power of their support and love for one another? So what is the relationship between the brother and sister? Well, the sister is like, like a mother. Essentially, is a mother replacement. Yeah. It was more than that, though, because um, he seemed to follow everything that she said to do. If she suggested it, even his marriage, uh, he went along with it. You know, 
But yeah, yeah, they kind of they were very tight, but it was because of I guess that what happened to the both of them. She was his you only know, how constant. they lost their mother. Yeah. She was his only constant in, in his life. Yeah. Yeah. Everything yeah, else is still gentle. not it's still not healthy. It was well, not and, and you know what? I think, yeah, it says what explains the longevity and power of their support and love for one another. Well, I don't know. It, it is, I think it's a little bit un, unusual. <laughs> um, anybody uh, else have anything to add to the, to their relationship or? You know, um, I, I have one sibling. She is six years older than I am. And we, my, my dad was an army chaplain, so we moved around a lot and relied on each other a lot. We were, we were, she and I were the constant sure. than our parents in our life. And um, I think that, you know, every sibling relationship is unique in some way. And when there's just two of you and the outside world keeps changing that um, you do develop a very, very strong relationship. You may fight, you may disagree and so forth, but boy, when push comes to shove, you are there for each other. Sure, sure. And That's I think fair. Danny really, I, I'm the younger sibling and I think him, he is the younger sibling, felt he had to be there for her. Um, maybe even more than she felt she needed to be there for him. Well, especially being that he had lost both parents and the father was quite a blow. For, and he took his mother leaving very hard also. Well, I don't know if he remembers that so much, as much as Maeve. Remember, she physically was ill when her mother left. Right. Yes, well, she, she she remembers the mother even physically, but I think he was only what three or something. Three or four, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I read it in June. I'm not sure. Well, no, that's fine, but I think that he kind of didn't have the memories though, like Maeve did. So, but but still, I guess in his mind, yeah. What? How could a mother leave their kids? So, yeah, he was upset by it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, um, we'll get to Cyril now. What is Cyril Conroy like? How might specific behaviors, routines, and decisions of his have influenced Maeve and Danny? And why was he always more comfortable with his tenants than he was with the people in his office or in his house, in his house? What was it about buildings that he loved so much? So this is kind of about the father. <laughs> um, yeah, what was Cyril like? He was a born architect. He 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 was uh, born for it. Um, as far as the closeness to his children, he had his moments, but every once in a while, he he instilled <coughs> in them a work ethic. I think, uh, both encouraging them in schools. Um, and also teaching Danny, uh, taking him out on the Saturdays. But, you know, it's just not a, <laughs> a hallmark uh, relationship either, but who has a hallmark relationship <laughs> in their home? So, but, you, but Danny was very, <laughs> Danny really, um, I think he really thought that was a good time in his life when he was with his father doing that. He seemed well, to be very... Uh, comfortable with it. Um, Otherwise, I think his father was quite detached. So that's yeah. why he looks Busy. so forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he looks so forward to those times and on yeah. Saturday. Yeah, that was, that was the only that, attention he got. Mm -hmm. Sure, Danny. sure. Yeah. And now Beth, remember when you had mentioned earlier about this house, you know, this Cyril was just so excited about buying this huge, huge house for his family and, and he, without ever thinking about how the rest of the family may have viewed it. Um, but, and yeah, he was kind of headlong into his own thing there. 
I, um, I think though that that was how Cyril showed his love for his family because he couldn't verbalize it. He was more comfortable with the tenants um, than with his own family. And he was obviously in, enamored with building and permanence of the buildings. And I think he felt that he was being a good provider and a good father the way he knew how to do it. And sure. that's why he bought the Dutch house for his family. And I don't think he anticipated what a horrible decision that was going to be for sure. his children and his wife. Sure. Yeah, sure. I, I, I agree with you. It was much easier to be with the tenants because there, had, there was no emotional uh, need there. It, you know, it was just business and yeah. And, and yet I think if I remember right, he got involved with them and tried to help them and things, the tenants. So, yeah, some to a degree, mm -hmm. to a degree. Uh, well, sure, yeah, that he was always fixing things and yeah, yeah. Uh, knew well, a little sure. bit about plumbing and a little bit about painting and repairing or whatever, yeah, that's true. But he also though, at his funeral, all the people who came to say thank you for all the kindnesses, he had helped, he had helped people when they had been in jams, uh, as in they couldn't pay their rent. And so um, I, he felt better in a poor man's skin than a rich man's skin. Was it, I thought he was kind, you know, to the tenants. And, um, I, I just reread some of it to get ready here. And a part of this was one time, uh, so they couldn't pay the rent. And then the, the Danny said, and so, um, that would go on for about three months. And the next yeah. time they went on a yeah. Saturday, that family was not there, but they never yeah. were going out on, on a time when he was there. Uh, but then the one thing he did too, is that when he called on someone and his son was very ill, he took that child to the hospital. And Danny yeah. is thinking if a mother had been there, he wouldn't have done that. But because there was no mother in that house, he felt, I mean, that's what he felt he needed to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, was there anything anyone wanted to add to that or I can move on? All right. What are Fluffy's, and I think that's also Fiona, right? Um, evolving roles in the Dutch house. What is her overall influence on Maeve and Danny? Now she liked their nanny when they were little. Um, well, she brought, Fluffy was, well, she lost her job because she hit Danny. Um, although the circumstances around that were a little bit gray, but then ultimately she was the one who reconnected Danny yeah. and Maeve with their mother. So she was gone for decades. Yes. And then, she reappears having seen the mom in the Bowery and then ultimately reconnects the mom to exactly. maybe when she's hospitalized. So she's a very key role in their lives, even though she's absent for a good, sure. a good share of it. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. She's the one who actually brought them all back together again. Yeah. Well, she too and had uh, at the beginning, her father, uh, I, according to Maeve, um, I th think according to Maeve, that uh, uh, Fluffy had slept with her dad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. And expected more. I, she, she thought maybe she would end up marrying the father, and he made it clear that that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> right, right, right. She was yeah, a little naive there, but yes, I think she was just devastated by what transpired. Um, okay, what explains why Elna Conroy abandoned her children? In what ways might such a profound decision be justified or not? Why, as Maeve argues, are men who leave their families often judged less harshly? So I guess we'll start with what explains why Elna Conroy abandoned her children? You know, it wasn't until the end of the book that we really got the full picture on that, but um, 
it was interesting. <laughs> Anybody have any comment on Elna leaving her children? <laughs> well, they said Elna was crazy. I mean, that was kind of like the blanket description for somebody who was unhappy or depressed or had some mental health issues. And then just the one word explanation, crazy. And, and so obviously I think it was a sign of the times and the stigma sure. with mental illness and a mother abandoning her children. Right. And um, she hated the house. I mean, she's very, um, I don't know, conservatively minded, you know, she's uh, aware of the environment and everything and doesn't like a waste of money. And I mean, um, she wasn't consulted and it upset her, I think, the whole time that she was there. So she couldn't, yeah, because take, she couldn't take it, but I mean, it is strange to have that kind of a solution, you know, just to abandon your children, that's not normal. So uh, she, I think she tried to explain it to them at the end of the book. Yes, I think too that, you know, her thing was, I think she's probably overwhelmed by the house because what I gathered about her was she was just all giving, always wanted to help yes. poor or indigent people. And um, she probably kept thinking this house was such a waste when she could be helping others. And, and maybe that was the impetus for her to leave. You um, know, that that um, wealth bothered her. You know, she didn't want to be having it for themselves. So she was very conscious, you know, I don't know. I can't think of the right word, but she wanted to help others. <laughs> I think sure. it's... Um one one theme maybe one theme that maybe um, runs through this is how your house shapes you. Um, we think we shape our house, and we do, of course. But your neighborhood, your house, how you live, shapes who you are, and who you're perceived as in some ways. Um, oh, they live in a big house, you know, on, on the bay or something like that, is, is a perception versus, you know, somebody who lives in a little house inland someplace. Um, and maybe she just couldn't tolerate how she perceived herself as having to be to live in that kind of a house, you know. Um, we, we all think we want to live in a castle, but... I think the reality of castle life would be impossible for me. <laughs> I don't know, you know? I need a cozier space, a uh, small space <laughs> that I can fit into. Yeah, I know. You know, there's another piece to that. The, the other piece to that is that, um, um, you know, her husband was um, happier, more content, with the tenants, because he'd been a tenant himself. They both had been tenants. Maybe they just, neither of them ever got used to their wealth. They just were not comfortable having that wealth. I would be yeah. harsher. I would be harsher on both mom and dad. I, I think if she really wanted to help people, she could have found another way to do it rather than to leave her children. That's a pretty drastic <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. And with dad, yeah. Like the only thing dad did with Danny is to take him out to see these rental places, something he had to do anyway. It wasn't mm -hmm. really Danny focused. It was just like, okay, come along, learn what you got to learn. Um, I, I don't, wasn't impressed with either parent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is that Barb speaking? That is Barb. I came in late. Because I, I can't see you. Okay. Well, I know what you, I just don't, does, does anyone see her? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see me? Oh. Yeah. Yes. Are you on gallery? Oh, I, I'm see. on gallery. Yep. Wait, let me maybe readjust my gallery. Let's see. Anyway, I, I hear you, so I know okay. you're there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm up on my screen. 
Huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I hear you. You're not. Um, missing, you're not missing anything. That's <laughs> no. Well, I, yes, I want she to is. at least hear your opinion. Okay. Let's move on here. Um, I think we've talked about some of this. What were the various effects of Elna, Elna leaving her husband and children? Was it preferable, as Maeve argues, to have spent some years with her and then lost her, or as Danny experienced, to never have known her? And then it says, what are the particular emotional challenges of each experience? Um, you know, because Maeve was very forgiving, I think, at the end. She just couldn't wait to, you know, renew her relationship with her mom. Any? Well, and, and didn't the help say that that mom was a really, a really, really nice lady? Yes. I, I mean, they, they both really liked her. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and the way Maeve carried on, particularly with Danny, she, she had to learn a lot from, say, her mother for the short time that she was around for her. I would think that that was, you know, one of the reasons she was able to be such a good caregiver. Somebody's phone there. Okay. Right. Um, did anybody else have anything to add to that? Or? I think I it's think equal. I think it's, I mean, I don't think you can say one is harder than the other. If you've never known the per the mom, yeah. and your brain is constantly sure. thinking, what was she like, and why did she leave me, and blah blah blah. But if you knew the mom, you know what she was like, and you're like, why? Still like, why did she leave me? She loved us so much. She was such a good person. So I think, sure. Either way, it's probably about equal. And I Danny, think <laughs> I, I think Danny had more of that reaction, you know, anger at the mother, but uh, yeah. May was just happy to have her back. <laughs> I think May yes. too was yeah. was uh, May was covering for her mom too, because she kept telling Danny all these things about their mother, so that. He, uh, and I'm wondering if she felt a little guilty that. Um, their mom left, or I mean, you know, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Well, I, yeah, it, but but I do I did think at the end though I I thought the relationship that Maeve um, then redeveloped with her mother and everything it was kind of um, yeah. I thought that was, you know, very and interesting, but very good. And that, you know, for Danny to have to look at it through his sister's eyes, you know, is all like you say. It, um, they definitely had entirely different takes on it. You know, um, when you said um, it, it saw it through his sister's eyes, I, that's one of the things I loved about the book. I loved him being the narrator. <laughs> and, and I really did. And, and just that switching back and forth, uh, what he found out later was kind of in the beginning of the book often. Um, right. I, I like just the way she presented this story a whole lot. Okay. Okay. Anything to add on that or we'll move on? Um, it says, what are Maeve's particular strengths and abilities? What are her priorities in life? What might explain her decision to stay at her unchallenging job or not pursue a committed romantic relationship or family of her own? Do you know, the whole time I kept thinking, you know, she's so good at her job and she's so smart. I kept thinking maybe this Mr. Otterson, was he married or something? I thought maybe. I, I thought at the end they were going to say, oh my gosh, you know, she and Mr. Otters had an affair, but I guess that wasn't true. <laughs> Anybody have any thoughts on Maeve, her reason for uh, being real smart and just staying with the same job forever? I think, she, I think she liked the people and and that uh, employer, what was his name, Mr. Otters? Otterson, I think. And uh, they, they had um, a great friendship, I thought, you know, he. Sure, I agree. And, and also, she actually felt like she ran the company. 
she, I, yeah. she, I think she was satisfied. I think she wanted to be still focused on Danny. I mean, <laughs> even as he became an adult. Sure. She was there for him. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in what ways are Sandy and is it Jocelyn? Is that how you say that? Important to the various Conroys? There's two uh, sisters, yeah. In what way are they important? Um, well, obviously, they. <laughs> Pardon? They they come as a set for the Dutch, Dutch house. Well, <laughs> right, and and they were a constant again too, where they you know they they took care of the kids. Um, and also, of course, they didn't like Andrea too much. So, <laughs> well, she fired them even. <laughs> but but they, I, they were still part of. Uh, Maeve and Danny's, you know, life. Sure, and like what you said, and uh, part of the house. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It had see. a nice, uh, happy ending for everyone. <laughs> oh yes, I agree. I agree. To bring them all back. Well, let's talk about the second wife. What is the source of Andrea's power? Why is she so bent? on using it against the others, especially the women in the house. What does she covet and care about? The house. The house. The house, the house. The house. yeah, the house. <laughs> Any yeah. other comments on her? Status. I think she wanted her, uh, to be status. Her own, uh, her own children too. Yeah, and it's interesting how Maeve and Danny, you know, got along well, you know, kind of like the younger kids too. Um, but but she definitely, I think, was focused on becoming a part of that house <laughs> and keeping it because even toward the end, it was kind of her her thing was owning that house, wasn't it? Um, I think there was know, even more, more to it than that because she was smart. She had everything Oh, yes, uh, yes. Put his business and everything right. put in both their names. So she was, yes. a, she was a smart cookie, and I think she used her good looks, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, because that was the other part of the whole book, wasn't it? Where the kids kept going there and looking at the house and, and trying to use all the money up in the trust for the uh, Danny's education. Uh, yeah, because otherwise she had everything. You know, she wanted that house so badly. I was surprised that at times she would be gone. She'd be gone for a while and then she'd come back into, you know, um, Cyril and all that. Um, she didn't really stay there and like grab it right off the bat. I was surprised she took a chance and was gone for a while and then she'd come back. Yeah, yeah. Before they were married, you mean? Before yes, they were yes. If I remember yeah. correctly, all my, I write down notes, but my, my notes aren't here in Florida. <laughs> oh. Well, my, oh. My notes are up where I was in June. <laughs> but if you think about it, what good did wanting to own the house and the businesses really do for her as a happy person? She mm -hmm. alienated her children. Um, her death was very sad, tragic. She had the one daughter who came back out of a sense of obligation, probably in a feeling that she should. And the other daughter wanted nothing to do with her mother again. And then at the near end, she mistakes Danny for her husband. And I just think she was a pretty tragic character. She's a very divisive character. Yes. And yes. played a big role in ruining Danny and Maeve's lives. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and you wonder if she felt guilty about any of it because she didn't seem to. So why, 
Why do you think Cyril even married Andrea? What good was she to him? <laughs> well, I don't think he. I don't think he knew uh, what she was going to be like, you know. And he never stood up to her. He, you know, he just let her roll right over him. And yeah. he, she was much younger, you know. Maybe it, it um, built up his ego. Yeah, and, and he probably never, never thought through on how she was going to treat Maeve and Danny. Or, uh -huh. And he probably never thought through on how, like you say, she was able to acquire all, all the money and all the house. So I don't Re think he thought too much about that. <laughs> Remind me how she was a single mom. Did her husband die? Did What was the deal there? Do we know? Because I can see... I don't if remember. If she is a single woman with children and he is a single man with children, that at least could have been the initial thing. It's like a kind of a marriage of convenience. I'll be the dad the way he, I mean, he wasn't mm -hmm. ever a bad figure, but I'm saying it would have made the household. There's a husband and a wife and four kids. Yeah. I don't know. I'm guessing. But do we know why she was available? No, I don't remember. No. Does anyone? Anyone have any theory why he, uh, the father never stood up to her? I mean, she just would say something and he would never argue or disagree or say, no, this is my feeling. You know, I mean, he just let her do everything. Just take over. Where is this? Um, Who's going to remind me? To you, father. There are three of them out there. One. He reminded me of uh, a person who uh, just was sort of um, uh, an automaton or whatever you call it, where, you know, I, this is my role. This is what I have to do. I lost my wife and now I need another wife. Uh, I need a house. So here's a house. I'm, you know, it was, it was like, these are the 11 things you have to do as a husband, okay? Get a house, <laughs> you know? Sure. Lose sure. a wife, get a wife, sure. you know? And, sure. and um, I don't feel like we had a lot of his motivation otherwise uh, explained to us. Yes, sure. Someone okay, now, mentioned, someone, go ahead. Uh, somebody also mentioned, um, that he never stood up to her, but there was the one time when he was going to yes. take Danny to New York, right? Um, and he just he cut oh, out yeah. uh, early, early, early mm -hmm. with Danny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that didn't make his uh, Andrea uh, very happy. Um, right. I have a question too. In the end, wasn't it Maeve who came back? I thought Maeve actually stayed with Andrea until her death. It was well, Elna. It, 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 it was Elna. Elna did. The mother. Her mother. It was the mother. Yeah. Oh, so her mother. So Elna no, stayed. Oh, no. Danny, Danny and Maeve's mother, right? Yes. Right. Okay. Correct. Correct. The first wife, essentially, the first wife stayed with yeah. the second wife, right? With the second wife. Uh huh. Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. We touched on this a little bit before. Uh, what is significant about each of the portraits in the Dutch house? Well, we think of Elna, how she did not want to have a portrait done of herself. That was the other thing. She was not going to have the money spent having a picture painted of her that's why her she had her daughter do it because right. they're you know they didn't want to waste the money because the artist had already come right. Right. so we know that was the significance i think of the the um painting of mave um but what about the is it how is it van Hoove, van Hoovex? <laughs> um their picture stayed out throughout the whole history of everybody living in the house that's odd too. The whole thing is so odd. You yeah. know? <laughs> well, I think it was because she loved that house and that was part of the house. 
you know, when it came, <laughs> when she got it. <laughs> and you think back to English castles. Yeah. yeah. They just left the pictures on the yeah. wall. Yeah. <laughs> it was part of the ancestry of the place. And maybe they felt they were walking in the footsteps of those people. I don't know. Yeah, or it's part of the woodwork or the decor. I mean, that's just <laughs> all part of what she loved. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And it, I mean, it was a Dutch painter. So, I mean, it was a portrait of significance, even if even if they didn't know the people, I, you know, right. I, you would right. have Right. <laughs> and how um, good is that, uh, and how uh, it worked out so well that Maeve and May look so much alike that yeah. you could put it back up there and decide who they thought it was, really was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that too. All right, why do you make it? Why? Okay, why, why what? are there so Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, why are there so many roadblocks in this story that that you get so far and then there's a, something happens that ch changes the whole pattern and I, I is that good writing or <laughs> yeah I I just and I also thought about Danny when he kept trying different things but he knew he wanted medicine and yet what caught what let him drift away from that strong idea I mean, there, I don't know of anybody in that kind of a situation, but that must must happen. But well, I think Danny Danny did not want to go to medical school. It was Maeve who wanted him to go and spend the yeah. money in the truck because he just wanted to do what his dad did. I think right. Yeah. Um, even though I think he was very smart and obviously he did well in the medical school. Yeah, but I think well, it's because he wanted to do something else, but she wanted him to spend the money. <laughs> and you know, he didn't have the money to do the real estate, but he used that insider information to buy the property that became valuable. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he was very good at do yeah doing real estate and everything because he just seemed to be a natural at that. And I wondered if he didn't really enjoy being a student. There was quite a bit about him. Um, he and his one professor, who his chemistry professor, oh, yeah. said, you've got to yes. know chapter one before you can, and sort of taught him how to be a student scientist. And yeah. Yeah. maybe the enjoyment of being a student was enough to help motivate him to finish medical school, you'd re need some real strong motivation, especially if you didn't think you were going to be a doctor when you got done. But maybe he just, the love of learning and the love of being a scientist was enough to get him to, to at least finish school. Uh, yes. I think it was to please Maeve and spend as much money as possible. <laughs> I mean, I think he really wanted to get into the real estate, but you need money to do that. Right. And so by him knowing that that building was going to be built there and buying that property, what was it, a parking lot or something? And then they needed it for the building he made. Sure. That, sure. Was, the, that was his little nest egg that started the whole real estate part. Yep. Right. Yep. Okay. Um. All right, why do Maeve and Danny sit secretly in a car outside of the Dutch house many times throughout the years after they exiled from it? To me, that was just the thread of the whole book, wasn't it? Them sitting out there by that house. Morbid obsession. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a little strange. <laughs> yes. My husband does that with uh, houses that we've lived in before. He'll, he'll say, <laughs> drive past our old house I'm like why we don't live there anymore <laughs> well but I get driving past once in a while I mean I've done that myself but to sit and park out there and seem like they did it pretty yeah. often <laughs> I agree I always wondered why Andrea didn't see them or if she did she didn't acknowledge it 
I don't know. I thought it was kind of strange. But, but that, that the road where they sat, with, I think there was a long gravel driveway because remember in the beginning, one, one time she appeared at the swimming pool and they looked for her car and couldn't find it. And they went looking, was a block away because she'd had an accident. So I mean, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I, I pictured it too as having a long driveway. Oh, it's all part of the house picture. You know, big, wonderful. Yeah. Oh. Do you think they covered the house? Did they cover the house? Who? Cover it going back? Oh, you mean? You, oh, yes. Well, probably. <laughs> yeah, I think they never got over kind of being thrown out. It seems like they're kind of looking the for kids, things that they I mean, missed. Um, uh, Danny, Danny, oh. They were looking okay. for parts of their childhood that they never really completed. They, got, they both kind of got thrown out and, and it seemed like they were looking for part of their past. Yeah, but yep. then, and aren't we all like, I mean, that's where their memories were stored. That's that's what they had, even though they weren't all terrific memories. That was, that was a, that was their life in, in that house, and and so to to recall, to be able to reminisce, I think that was like the little trigger. They'd sit in the house, and then they'd reminisce about the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Isn't it Maeve who really wanted to be sitting out in front of that house more I than think Danny? I think so. It, it appeared, it, it seemed like that. Okay, we only have a few more minutes and a few more questions here. Well, there's a lot of questions. I'm trying not to ask all of them. Okay, after uh, reuniting, Elna tells Maeve and Danny that when she left, she knew they were going to be fine. In what ways did they end up fine or not? Let's just say as a mother, she was probably hoping they would end up fine. But um, so did they end up um, fine or not? No, they're emotionally scarred for their lives. The rest of their lives. I mean, getting thrown out of your own house at age 15 is not something you can ever recover from, I don't think. I don't think no nope. recover loss, but I think some people, and I believe Babe was able to go on and live a fulfilling life. It didn't it didn't crum crumble her and she didn't become neurotic or do yeah. some weird things. I mean I I'm sure she didn't like it, but I think she accepted it and moved on. And, and some people are able to do that. I don't know how, and some are not. I think so. she yeah. was older too. I think she was Danny out of college. Danny Danny well. was probably... Oh, go on, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I did okay. also, just when I was refreshing, I got as far as uh, when Danny was in, in um, school, medical school, he went over Easter to his sister's house and she woke him up to go to church and he refused and he refused and he refused. Um, I think her faith might have been what helped pull her through that. I don't know. She said something about, he, he couldn't believe that she wanted to go to church without a parent saying, you've got to go to church. And she said, I like something, the joy I sing. I like the, the, the companionship you get there. And, you know, she just named the things that church brought to her. And so I'm thinking maybe that was one of the things that enabled her to carry on. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I thought she was happy in her job and going to church and uh, being with Danny and helping Danny. But I thought it was abnormal to have him go to medical school when he didn't really want to just to spend as much money as possible from the trust you know that it was just like a revengeful thing to do like spend as much money as you possibly can you know on your education because that's the only money we're getting <laughs> Well, and, and at least she was very upfront about it. And that was exactly what she said. Uh, you know, it was, it was very transparent. 
that was what she wanted. Um, you know, we got to end here in a little bit. So I'm just going to skip over down to this question. We didn't talk too much about Celeste and, and uh, Danny's family, but this one is a good one where what changes and transfer, transformations are suggested by May's buying of the Dutch house? So Danny's daughter buying the Dutch okay. house. What might it imply that Danny walks with her through the darkness to enter it? A, a lot transpired through all their lives, and this was, uh, you know, many years later. Well, I didn't think May bought the house. She didn't. She pass away, wasn't it? A, a May and da Danny's daughter. Danny's yeah. daughter bought it. Yeah. Yeah. Bought it. yeah. She was like a, an actress or something, and she made some money, and she was able to buy it. Yeah. And uh, movies, uh, entertainment. You know, yeah. if I were Danny, it's like, okay, I was in that house. It was never any much good stuff, but he had a great relationship <laughs> within his own family. And maybe he wanted to put that good family into that house and enjoy <laughs> the house, you know, and be able to enjoy it. Yeah, the yeah. Sure. Yeah, because of this part about walking through the darkness to enter it. It's like, we got through all this and now, because the house was very bright and lit up because of all the windows. Well, and didn't know. he uh, see Maeve, wasn't it, uh, when he looked out and saw the daughter in the yard and the bench at the very yeah. end? Yeah. He thought it was okay. Maeve. Yeah. And oh, he sure. Realized it was his daughter right. smoking. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, they look so much alike. Yeah. 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 So does anybody else have any more comments? Christina said she was, we were done at 3.30. So does anybody else want to say anything else about the book? Well, thank so, you, maybe. Elaine, for uh, facilitating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Thanks. you're welcome. But I might have missed something that somebody wanted to talk about. Was there something, something else? It was else? kind of depressing. <laughs> I need something <laughs> not depressing right now. Okay. And I like to ask, what is the next book? It's Becoming. Oh, becoming a, a Michelle Obama's right book. Oh, oh that's a good one. That is a it is good. It's very good. It's a good one. Yeah, uh, one. That one's set for Excellent. Tuesday, December eighth. Okay. okay. Good. Is that you, Christina? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's been really busy here. Um, well, that's yeah, okay. So. I think we kind of summed up our our discussion here. So, if you had anything Perfect. else you wanted to say, we're done. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. And for anybody, Hi, all. Oh, and Hi. for anybody Hi. that wants Becoming, go ahead good and set up. everyone. Oh, yeah. If you want Becoming, go ahead and set um, a hold request for it. If you'd like some help with that, give us a call and we can do that. Um, we are going to be switching. All the libraries are switching to the curbside model, like what we are doing this summer, starting tomorrow morning. So. Um, just you just need to give us a call when you see that it's arrived or if you want us to set one outside for you. Um, everybody's done curbside at least once here, right? I mm -hmm. think so. If you have any I, questions, you can let us know. We are keeping uh, the same hours that we have, so hours aren't changing. We'll be here. We're still um, getting deliveries from elsewhere, so that'll all still work. It's just um, you won't be able to come into browse, for example, or pick up your holds at the desk. We would be doing that curbside. Oh no! Okay. I didn't know yeah. that. Um, yeah. Thank if, you. Anybody, if anybody needs um, tech access, we are uh, as of right now. It sounds like we'd be allowed to let people uh, one person or one family in at a time. It would be a call in for appointment, um, and it would be for up to max a half hour to like make photocopies that you need or printing that you need or some quick computer research or something. So, but that would that would be the mm -hmm. only way you'd be coming in. Um, Otherwise, we're just doing the curbside like this summer. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Christina. Bye. Thank you. Great. Bye. Thank you. Stay healthy. Yes, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Be well. Bye. Wait a